Okay, on the uh, rather sad occasion of the death of uh, Hugh Hefner, I thought I would talk a little bit about my experience with Playboy TV. Unlike Richard Bay, I never got invited to um, uh, parties at the Playboy Mansion, which is unfortunate. And in my youth, I was simply relegated to hiding the magazines under my bed. And that's pretty much the extent of my contact with them, except for one uh, interesting story, which I think has bearing for you guys. Um, Lisa and I, every year, and several, sometimes twice a year, would go to Paris, to, sorry, to France, to Cannes, for MIP and MIPCOM. Uh, MIP is uh, Marché International de Production, which is uh, French for uh, the International Television Trade Show, which happens twice a year in uh, Cannes, which is a nice town on the south of France. And what happens at these things is that all the producers of television, independents, companies, stuff like that, and all the buyers, which is cable television and broadcast stuff like that, come together for this giant five-day event, uh, once in the fall, once in the spring, and you wear a little badge and it says either you're a buyer or a seller. Uh, sometimes we were buyers, like when we were with the VOA or we were setting up channels, and sometimes we were sellers when we were producers. So we went there many, many times, and you get to know a lot of people, you get to meet a lot of people. Um, on one occasion, uh, we were there, and we were actually there buying for a TV channel that we were trying to set up, so we were meeting with a lot of people. And you, the, 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 the thing is done in the Palais, which is uh, on, the, on the corner where, the, where the, the boats are docked and stuff, and on the first floor is these giant displays with NBC, they got huge things and CBS and Discovery Channel and as you go up and up and up uh, you get smaller and smaller until you finally get to the top floor which is like you know uh, 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 sort of African TV channels and and cable and little independent operators and there's a lot of independent operators that run around trying to sell their own stuff Zoe you know what I'm talking about because you try to do this yourself anyway uh, we ran into one of these guys who was an independent operator and he was uh, schlepping a uh, an hour-long documentary that he made about Hitler and, you know, he was in love with this thing, and he'd spent years making it, and he wanted to sell it to the History Channel, and the History Channel didn't want it. Here's a good lesson. Don't make something that people haven't asked for. And he, I don't know how much time and money he'd invested in this thing. And so, you know, I mean, we got trapped at a table with him, so we started to talk to him. And the years he'd spent researching and paying for the archival material and making his own stuff. And he gave us the DVD, which, you know, I'm not really interested in looking at. But, you know, I felt bad for the guy. So, you know, I sort of a sympathy. I'd sort of sit there and listen to him tell his story about all the work and all the research. And, you know, we thought, oh, my God, this is another schmageggy running around with some crazy kind of thing. And we said to him, uh, what do you do in real life? Because obviously you're not making a living doing this. And he said, oh, uh, for the last 20 years I've been producing all the videos on the Playboy channel and their, and their DVDs. I thought, well, this is, yeah, for some people, uh, this would be a dream job, but the guy really hated it. And what he really wanted to do was make documentaries about Hitler, which is like his personal passion. And far be it for me to denigrate somebody's personal passion. My own personal passion probably would have been what he did for a day job, but that's another story. Anyway, the whole point of the story is that if you want to sell stuff, do not make whole shows. Do not make documentary hours. Do not do that. Because the first thing you do is you show up one of these things and nobody wants it. I mean, the last thing in the world is you go to some network with some completed hour and the more you show it to them, the more crap there is for them to pull apart. What you want to do on the other hand, and I'm surprised he didn't learn this lesson for working for Playboy TV, what you want to do on the other hand is you want to sort of tempt people, less is more, just show a little bit. So, you know, we've been in the business for, I don't know, 30 years now and we've made hundreds and hundreds of series and the fact is that the broadcaster is not a client buying something from you. The broadcaster is a partner because it has to work for them and they have to rate and they're only going to buy stuff that they feel they can have a hand in shaping. So if you want to pitch stuff, just make a minute. Two minutes at the most, a mi less is more, because you just want to tempt them with stuff and you want to show them a little bit, which is something Hefner learned a long time ago. Less is more, tempting, bring people into the tent. And so, you know, this guy, Playboy Channel, I... To me, it's a dream job, but to him, it was apparently a nightmare. And maybe it is, because when I was a kid, one Playboy magazine was exciting. But if you got 30 or 40, by the time you I'd fit 100, 200. But at some point, it got boring. And I'm sure after years and years of producing Playboy TV, it got boring for him. And Hitler must have looked much more interesting. Don't ask me why. But the point of the lesson is, I don't think he ever sold the Hitler documentary, uh, but 
if he had just made like a, a two minute pitch reel, first, he would have saved himself a lot of money and heartache and time. And second, the odds on selling it would have been much better because he would have found some broadcaster who said, there's something in there, but why don't you make Hitler and girls with bikinis or whatever would have worked. And then he would have at least had a sale and made some money. So today's lesson is, um, Today's lesson is don't make whole documentaries or whole films or whole pilots and expect you'll sell them to somebody. And one other short story while I'm here and I think about this is that years ago, Russ Kagan uh, set me up with Nick Guccione, who's Bob Guccione's friend. And Bob Guccione, of course, was the founder of Penthouse, the great competitor to Playboy. And, and he give, Bob had given his son Nick the job of putting the stuff online when the internet was first starting. So I met with Nick and I thought, well, it's going to be a great time working with this guy. And he turned to me and said, my biggest problem here is that no matter what I put on, uh, the free stuff is, is better and it's free. And in fact, Penthouse went broke. So probably not a good business to get into. Maybe Hitler documentaries are better, but keep it short. That's the lesson. Talk to you later. Bye.